Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Yeah, welcome back, welcome back. Oh, I am a happy people at the minute because firstly, it's the last box. Last box. Oh. Uh, also, I have just been approved for YouTube partnership, which is just absolutely outstanding. Um, I noticed that they have changed the requirements for it. So I applied and within an hour I was accepted. So yeah, dead chuffed. I've, I've set up some bits and bobs like a, a membership thing, just some basic stuff at the moment because I don't know what's, what's fully what with it. But for now they are just some general levels. If you want to go have a look at them, that'd be absolutely fantastic. If you want to support me in that regard as well, that would be absolutely outstanding. And obviously I would start doing shout outs and this, that, and the other. Yeah. Dead, dead, exciting, exciting stuff. But even more exciting stuff here is we have lifted dropper. Let me grab the instructions. And then once this is done, I can actually put all the packaging into its boxes and then put those boxes inside the stomper box and then I can put that with my other pile of boxes. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm I'm weird. I keep the boxes. I don't know why. I just I appre I appreciate the box art, even though I know that the stomper one and the forge build one hasn't got art on it. I'm still keeping the box. I I, don't, I think it's because it was such a dear deal. But anyway, this one, what are we looking at? We've got Two lots of little pipey bits and everything else seems to be big sections. Two shoulder pads again, two surrounds for the gun itself, then how, what? Huh? Oh, it's double section. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Right. Oh, that does look funky. Oh, I've, there's a big skull on the side and everything. That is, it is going to be right arm as well. So that skull will be on the outside. Unless it's the same on both sides. I don't know. But we've got all this nice claw cluster thing. We've got the uh, collator, uh, the claw connectors, the lift arm. Hmm. Is that because it just like pivots like that? I don't know. Is it classed as a melee weapon? Or is it classed as a ranged weapon? I don't know, because I was like I say, I was out of the hobby at the point that this came out. So I don't know. I don't know what it was like to even field the thing. But it was hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. But yes, right. So upper arm section, yeah. Those go onto it, onto that. That goes onto there, I'm guessing. Then that goes onto these, both of them. That goes somewhere around it. Shoulder pads are shoulder pads, then spikies and cable bits. That's the one. Spikies and cable bits. We've got some cable looking things here and the spikies. There on the ends. It's got to be those, right? Yeah, got to be, got to be. Let's let's open it up, have a quick look at the parts, double check, make sure that I am right with what I'm thinking. So this is the main body of the lifter. Uh, oh, oh, I don't like that end. Can you see that? I know it's orky part. Yeah, probably be all right. You know, it don't have to be. Super duper, but like I say, it's got to stay standard because it is for the collection. One of every model. Ever. One of every model ever, 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 ever. And I mean that, but the only... The, there is actually... Sorry. There is one model that I'll probably never, ever, ever get. And that is the armor cast Great Gorgon. Gargan. Gargan, yeah. Not Gorgon. Um... Because those things don't exist. What is it? 200 of them or something was made. And only in America. And nobody sells them. And I think there's one at 
Warhammer World. Like just a bit down south from me in Nottingham. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the closest I'm ever gonna to get to it. I don't I don't think Games Workshop as a company is going to sell me that particular model, are they? <laughs> Maybe one day, if I, I don't know, become a millionaire and I walk in and say, Here's a million pounds, give me that model. I wonder what they'd do. <laughs> ah, wishful thinking, eh? But yes, let's look at these pieces. That looks so evil. That is. Oh. It, it, honestly, that sort of structure of claws reminds me very much of chaos, opposed to orc. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are well, the only one getting vibes like that? Maybe, maybe not. So, yeah, one under one over like so. That is. Oh, that's like the size of the base of the Mega Boss uh, in Mega Armor, War Boss in Mega Armor. That's the one. Um, just the yeah, encompassing of that. Crazy, absolutely crazy. But sadly, this also looks to be probably the messiest of the models. And yeah, we've got. Got bits that don't exist again. So this kit, like I say, I, it claimed to be new, but it clearly isn't. You know, but it's one of them. It's like how many more of them are left in the world? It's thirteen years old. Yeah, Th is it thirteen for this one? Yeah, tw twenty ten. There. 13 years old. And I got one in this condition. And it's still Forge World. So, yeah. It is what it is. Oh no, those two flimsy little pipes hold the whole claw section on. Oh, wow. Oh gosh, that's not nice. That is not nice. I, I think I have saved the worst for last here. Oh. Well. Okay. I'm going to get everything cleaned up over the next day or so. And I will bring you back for what will probably be the disaster of me trying to pin the thing. But, yeah. Yeah. Stay to that. All those little plates, all those little rivets. Could do them out of gold, probably. It makes sense for them all to be little gold plates. Yeah. Because I think copper's a bit basic for that. Now the straps and stuff, yeah, do them out of copper. The bars on here do them out of copper, but do the thing yellow and the, some of the patches metal. I think, yeah, yeah, but certainly got my work cut out for me with the mess of this unit, especially that ball and that horrible slip there. Wow. Oh, no, look how far down it goes to there. No, it keeps going down. It's there. Oof. Oof. I mean, I can round that off. That's fine. I can round that off. That's fine. That, you're not going to tell. That, I can straighten it out. That's a mounting point. That's annoying. And then this is all threaded. That's what I hate the most about it. So I'm going to have to file them all down, get them all interlined. And then this threading, I don't know. I don't know what I can do with that. Don't really think there's a way to sculpt it accurately. Then the dome itself, I think is manageable. But does it go the other way? 
No, the other side is fine. Yeah. Yeah, completely fine. So I'm just lucky with that bit, I guess. Outstanding. <laughs> right. Like I say, I'll bring you back when they're all, once they're all cleaned up. They've had the bath. You've seen it all before. So, yeah. Back in a tick. Well, it won't be one of my videos without an absolute mess. Um, yeah. I made a mess of this piece here. This is meant to have a big bit of pole coming off it in order for it to connect into that thing. Yeah, completely off center there with the camera, as per. Um, so I've got the lovely job now of digging through my bin in an attempt to find the part. And obviously the bit itself, look, it looks as if it's not really part of it. It looks like one of the, the standard supports, like what comes with everything else. Now, what I'm hoping is if I can't find this section here, that maybe one of these supports that I've took off will be the same width or will work as a replacement. But the problem with it is, and this is the killer, and this is what has really, really annoyed me, is that... It's this bit, these two bits. Now, I don't like that connection to start with. It is so bad. I mean, where are we? Here we are. I've, I've, I think I showed it earlier. I've, uh, I've done a lot since then, so I forgot. But that goes into there. I think this side actually fits in. No. Where's the other one? There. Fumbling around as per. But yeah, that goes into there as such. Yeah. So that's not exactly the strongest of connections. It's decent. Don't get me wrong. It's decent for what it is. And I can probably pin that end. I'm going to have to try and pin the front as well. Because it certainly, certainly needs it. But then. From this. There's meant to be a pole that is parallel to this piece that goes forwards and then that is meant to sit on it and away from everything else yeah so then this affixes obviously to the other side like such as I showed yeah that's no bother and then the other one on the other side has another pole so it's just two poles little poles that hold that whole front end on and I can see it being the first thing to fall off or get damaged or something. So I need to, yeah, figure this one out. Wow, it's it's already a hard one to pin. And it's already a hard one to figure out how to future-proof it. Because do I want to keep it detachable in order to put on a battle wagon? Because technically, one of these you can put on a battle wagon. But... I might just wait for another one to appear in the future and put that on a battle wagon. So, yeah. So I can have all the additions for battle wagons. Yeah. That's going to be fun. But it is what it is. So, like I say, I have myself a horrible carrier bag. And I'm going to have to dig through my bin, which I have been messy and not emptied it in a couple of days. So this is going to be fun. But, yeah, I'll bring you back, hopefully, if I find the bits or something suitable to act as a replacement. And here we are. One of them was on the floor. The other one was in the bottom of the bin. Yeah. But it's done. Found them. Crisis averted. The problem is, is that I have obviously cut them up here um, and trimmed them. And that's obviously going to result in the shafts of them being shorter. But the, the depth of this kind of counteracts that. So the plan is to drill and pin this entire shaft. So before I cut it off of this unit, I'm going to try and wow stick all the way down it, straight down into the resin block underneath. If it bobs out the side, it bobs out the side. Yeah, it's a risk I'm going to have to take. Then once it's been drilled fully, I can chop it, then we can affix it to this part by drilling in there centrally as well, align it all through, 
with a nice long piece of wire, then drill into this a small sort of retaining section. Maybe, hmm, maybe I do have to go a bit deeper. There is this bolt thing here that I could try and align everything through. And then a glob of green stuff on the top and a quick circular sculpting of it. Should be, yeah, should be manageable. That's the plan. Whether or not I can achieve it is going to be something entirely different, I reckon. So I'm going to wait until I've woken up a little bit more and my eyes are working a bit better. They're still a bit blurry. I haven't been sleeping all that great. So once that has happened and I'm comfortable with moving forwards, I can do that. Also, I found a long piece of resin here, but it is far too broad. It's almost double the width of the piece, but it's fine. Then I also got another decent circular sort of section, but these could be whittled down or used as stronger supports or something in case they completely mess up. So I do have other options. Now, the problem with it is the different lengths. So I'm going to have to make sure that I get these level. So they're going to have to have a break in them and then they're going to have to be filled and sculpted. But yeah, if I can make sure that this end here, the, the bit closest to the log is flat and straight and right, then I can affix it to these proper. Then I can just bridge the gap on the other end by adding green stuff, or if it really, really, really comes down to it, I use milliput, which I don't want to do. I really don't want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Back in a tick. Okay, so the first lot of pinning has been done. I've corrected the mistake. What I've done is I put a paperclip straight the way through that center section there. And I've drilled down these shafts. I haven't cleaned them up or leveled them out fully yet. This needs a bit of a hair dry. I put it together, but I think over here needs a bit of hair drying because if you look at it, it's very wonky. Even if it is okay, it's still very wonky. And I don't think that's quite right. So I might have to try and break this apart. Not looking forward to that, honestly. But I think I could just hair dry that and be okay. So these go in onto these. So we have that one in there and then that one just hangs across like so. They need rotating and some green stuff and this, that and the other, but it's done. It's level with the unit. It looks right. It's an appropriate distance, you know, it's not too much, it's not too little. Then there is the two little horns and all these do is they affix onto this bit here. So they go up and in like so. And I don't think that these parts will need pinning. Honestly, I can't see them needing it. They're not really going to get touched. Nobody's going to be grabbing the thing by the end of the gun, are they? Or at least I hope not. So next one is pinning this and how I want to approach pin, uh, pinning it. Do I want it to have any form of mobility or am I going to keep it in a set position? Because I don't know if this anchor point on these will allow a good pivot. You know what I mean? Like if I clamped them together, would the gun just go bleh and straight be floppy? I don't know. That's what I need to determine and decide what I'm going to do pinning wise. So actually I do kind of need the gun out. Hmm. Yeah, Cause it's this one it goes in there. And that is super loose. And I believe the other side is super loose as well. Yeah, that's easily put in there. 
So in order to clamp it strong to the point where, oh gosh, to the point where I can get some form of pivot out of it, I'd probably have to pin all the way through the gun on the arms, which doesn't sound fun at all. So I think it'll have to be, it'll be in a set position. You know what I mean? It'll just be pointing slightly up, slightly down. Probably slightly down like so. Yeah. I should be able to... Hmm. Actually. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to paint all of this like that. So the next one would be, could I get these onto the gun without braying the hell out of them? Don't even think that's going to be a possibility either. Yeah, because all these intersections and everything could do with being painted before it's put together, which means that this will have to be a separate unit. Which I kind of didn't want. I didn't want this to be a separate unit. I wanted everything to be together, but it doesn't look as if that's going to be possible. And... Does that need shaving off? I don't think it does. I think we'll be okay with that. But I don't know if there's meant to be a gap on this top or what. Because, yeah. If it was like so. Because I think the pipes are the point where you're like, yeah, that's how it fix, fixes together. Whereas this side is a lot simpler. But with them being like that, look how misaligned that is. See that? Wow. Huh. I think this is where I need to get Blue Tech out and really, really look into it. But yeah, I'll figure something out and I'll bring you all back again. Okay, so... My usual trick, it's five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but actually getting somewhere with this now, getting some results. So what I've done is I've left this bit detachable, hence why it's so wobbly. The gun, I don't know what angle of the dangle I'm going to have it, so I've left it free until after painting, then I'll put it together and probably glue it in position because I don't think I want it positionable because, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's really going to achieve anything if I do that, so I'm not going to bother. I mean, I could just chop the lugs off and sink some magnets in there or whatnot, but I don't see the point, and I don't want to risk it accidentally falling out of the unit. So I'll keep it as is, and I thought this bit was meant to go downwards. It's actually meant to go upwards, so the unit is meant to be like that. Yeah, this, this box at the back. But I don't know, I might flip it upside down. I'll see how I feel about that. Then as for the poles, like I say, they just need some patching up when the gluing happens and a bit more paint on them and whatnot. So yes, right. Next bit, like I say, if I just remove them now. There we go. Over on the other thing. I'm going to be taking the gun out of this fixing these these horns because they might as well go on now they just need a bit of a straighten up that's not my doing that honestly uh that's how they've come there it is then as for this bit i have glued the mount onto the arm but i'm going to sink in some some mounting points and i think i'm going to come in at an angle here on this flat directly into the arm and then same this way directly into the arm so then when I do this plate into here I can come in at an angle either side and not have to worry about intersecting other mounts so I think that's going to be the best way and if I angle them then it's not coming apart sort of thing because I don't want it to ever because <laughs> at least it's together proper and whatnot so yeah we're on Kind of the final stretch here. I've tested it on the actual stomper itself 
And the best way to orientate it is slightly back, but you rotate the thing as far forward as we can. Then when it comes to mounting the thing, I could do the same sort of thing through the plastic into here to get two angled bonds all the way through. But then, like I say, I can drill maybe three or four holes into this, put some right angled bits in from in to out, get them flush with the inside of the plastic on this, and then Miller put to seal it all in, I think, because this is it's quite weighty for what it is. It's not super duper, it's not like really scarily heavy, but it is still heavy. So yeah, it's gonna be a case of gluing it and then trying to drill into there somehow. Which I'm not looking forward to doing because I don't think I can get the wow stick in there and there's no way I can get a small pin drill or anything in there either. So I might have to pre-drill the holes in the sense of I drill a hole in the plastic and in here and try and line it up somehow, which, yeah, that's going to be fun. I can do it off the, the lugs, put a little mark on this and onto there and whatnot and get it together somehow. But yeah, I'll, I'll worry about that in a little while for the time being. It's no bother. Again, I'll probably have to worry about that after I've painted the thing, which, yeah, not going to be fun. Not going to be fun. So it's more wow stick time, but not abuse this time. Yeah. But, oh, I don't know if the mic's going to pick this up. Don't know. Don't know if it did, but that is the sound of the bearings inside the unit. Yeah, I've made a little bit of a mess of the thing. But never mind, never mind. It's done its job, and it's continuing to do its job, so I'm happy at that. Things are looking good. I have the pins set in this section, and that's a pretty smooth hole. I've plugged it with a touch, a touch of glue. So it's got glue all the way in there. It's very secure. This thing is, is not going to fall off. I'm, I'm very happy with it, how it's gone in. Now, the problem is I'm going to use liquid green stuff to plug these, and I've never used the stuff before, so, yeah, I'm not quite sure about it, but we're going to give it a go. Um, yeah, supposedly it is just kind of water-soluble-ish, so I just need to put, like, a blob in there. But... Um, I think I'll probably rely on the, the trusty cocktail stick to just scoop, put some on, let it dry, see how much it shrinks, and then trim the excess, which is the plan anyway. But like I say, this is, it's well in there. I used, I did use a cocktail stick to just boop, boop, and straight in there. But we're all good. Very, very secure. So then with that done... I'll have to do the same for this. I did try test gluing it, um, but it's so wonky, it wouldn't have it, and I was too busy prattling around moving bits and bobs. So, my own fault, I'm going to have to take, take this off and, yeah, do it again. But, yeah, I think I'm going to remove the gun, like so, and then go from there. But this shouldn't be too bad because I think I can get the wow stick in there. Yeah, and get it all the way around there without any interference on anything. Now I don't know whether or not to go through these bolts here. Because that could be the smartest option, but the bottom one, getting the depth on it, might not be viable. I don't know just yet. We'll have to we'll have to see how we go. Like I say, the thing the wow stick's broken, the, the drill keeps coming out and locking fully extended like this, which is not good, but yeah, I have to keep using it for a bit. I'll have to get another one and mark this one up for wow stick abuse and have the other one for precision or something like that. Or I could do with one of those little, uh, what are they called? Little like grinder things and they've got like a beveled edge. They look more like a dentist drill so you can actually 
drill sideways. What do you call them? Oh, I can't remember. But either way, it is what it is. Now, as for cracks in armor plates like this sort of stuff here and how it's connected up there, this along the edge, this along this edge here, that's orky. That doesn't need any alterations. As for pinning this thing, that's the big question now. Do I need to? Because it, it's going to have a lot of sideways flex being applied to it, me taking the gun on and off and whatnot. But I don't think it does because it's got such a good connection in there. That little triangle in there is, yeah, that's where a lot of the strength is coming in. Definitely, definitely. But we'll see how we go with it. If it comes apart at some point, then I'll know I'll have to pin it. But like I say, it'll just be sink a hole in it, bang a paper clip in it, and green stuff it. So yeah, let's get doing this bit. In fact, before I show you, uh, before I go, sorry, I'm going to show you. Now, as we can see here, this is very wonky in how it stands. So I might have to put it on, You use this as a reference, glue it on, then I might have to put green stuff around it and try and trim the excess. That's going to be very awkward. But if I put that into the hole, please, into the hole. Wow, I can't do it. There we go. Yeah, so if it's in like that, then this, this is hooked up quite high. So the gun, if I just lift this up a smidge, like that, and adjust the focus again. If I have it like that to match the other arm's orientation, then this section is very, very high. But if I have it the other way, like a bit forwards, it's too low. That would mean that because the gun touches this, and that will mean that the gun would be maybe at this angle. Whereas if I do it that way, then I can have the gun down a bit more. Yeah, if I put that on and rotate it as far as it goes. But do I want this off? Try and keep the gun levelish. This is where it gets a bit dicky, like I say, because this isn't really straight. So it needs to be over to the side so it needs to be plugged in and then made sure that the side of this little nut lines up with the apex of this triangle that's what i've gauged it as but again that's not super fantastic unless i have it connected on the back like that so it angles the unit down slightly and glue it like this and then pin it and then plug underneath because it'll need extra support because it's going to hold a hefty bit of weight and I think it's just a little bit ish how this under section here is as it is because there isn't a lot of play in regards to material I'll be going into this archway if I sand it down I have took the knife to it and leveled it out more this is this is better than it originally was so yeah this is the only part of this kit that is being an issue. I would say that this is more of an issue than it was putting the belly gun on. Honestly, because that was just hairdryer work, getting it into shape. This is, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have a, have a double wear, have a think. I've, I've still got plenty of glue and I still, thankfully, have another one. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on. I'll bring you back in a tick once it's done. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it is done. Oh, it be done. It's pretty strong as well. I'm, I'm very happy with that connection. Very, very happy with it. So it's been a couple of days and I've decided to build this as one unit. Uh, this does come out. 
the gun comes off the arm so I can paint it and whatnot. But I wanted this as a complete unit, so I don't have to prat around like manhandling it after it's painted. So I got all this lot prepped up and sorted and glued together, and I'm going to have a go at doing it in just the arm without shoulder pads and then the gun itself because I'm trying to reduce the amount of sub assemblies I'm doing because I find that I spend so much time making the sub assemblies themselves then to spend more time to put the piece together finally is just becoming ridiculous and I need to get faster I need to get faster but not lose the accuracy so yeah practice makes perfect and this is going to be a heck of a job and a good way of hopefully achieving that goal. But yes, that is that done. So I have been working on the plastics. They are finally sort of getting to a position where I'm happy with them. I still keep seeing the occasional like remnants of a mold line here and there. So I'm probably going to have to go over these again. But the idea with it all is was to use as much of the original kit as I could um, in, in like appropriate ways. But we have two big issues. The, the two bits that are meant to come out of the back are the radio tower and the boss pole. Now, the radio tower is generally meant to go on this side because it affixes, if I just grab the head, it affixes onto this flat section here on the head and affixes on the back and goes straight up from there but the head gets in the way as you can see there's not there's no clearance from that to that so you, your thing ends up being over there and it looks it looks awful so i'm not doing that sadly because i i love the little goblin that well I say goblin i love the little gretchen that's uh up top i like him i think he's really really cool so next one was i asked my missus what she think would be the best orientation for the rear of the engine area. And she helped me choose this. So I gave some options of the icons that I wanted and we've gone for skull, uh, spanner, indented skull spanner, which is pretty typical mech orientated me. So pretty, pretty cool. Then we have the driller grot and she says it'd look better offside. So there we go. And I don't mean that in footy terms. So I thought maybe drilling on this pipe, but then I thought, no, that doesn't really make sense. So it's going to be drilling down into the nothingness down there, which, yeah, we don't know what's down there. It could be drilling something really important. We don't know. We will never know. And I figured that was uh, funny and appropriate. Then we have the, the ladder and my God, this thing is, it's, yeah, it's an accident waiting to happen, this thing. So this is going to go on and it is going to have spanner gob. Uh, I keep saying gob. Spanner Gretchen can be on there. And my arm is super shaky today. Wow, look at that. I can't hold it still. Wow. Um, Yeah, he's going to be obviously in there, blah, 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 blah. But because of how flimsy this section is and how awkward it is, I'm going to blue tack it. I'm going to blue tack it in there, blue tack it on there, and just detach and attach and whatnot. Just make sure they're all nicely varnished in a good way, and they should, yeah, make life easier. I know I could magnetize it, but it's it's working with a small amount of plastic to connect up in here, which is. That bit's fine. Drilling down there is fine. It's getting a magnet sunk into these little hinges and up into this wheel in order to get them in there. Maybe one day I'll do that, but for now, no, I I don't know. It's just it's a bit too delicate, and I'm I'm a little bit too shaky for work that intricate. Then lastly, we have all of these stubby bits, all of these spiky bits. Now. As I always say, Bad Moons love decoration, they love embellishment, they love this, that, and the other. But what is here is not Bad Moons. Now, hooks, claws, sharp bits of eye, eye beam. You know what I mean? This is very goth. All very goth. It's very evil sons as well. You know what I mean? 
but it isn't Bad Moons because Bad Moons like to adorn stuff with gold and it's generally self-cast. It's not reclaimed material, whereas this is just an orc has took a blowtorch to it or a, Gr a, a Gretchen's took a blowtorch to it and cut it to shape. Then, yeah, it's protruding out or it's bolted on. They don't cast this. They just reclaim it. So that makes sense. Same with these things. They don't cast them. They just reclaim them. So makes sense for everything else apart from bad moons, which is why I like these so much, these shoulder pads, because these on the top look like they have been cast by an orc. These dags look like they've been cast by an orc. They're not flat panels. This trim looks like it's been cast by an orc. Yes, it's built together in orky style. Yes, it's made out of reclaimed materials. But the intricacies of it, wow, using big words now, the intricacies of it display Bad Moon's traits opposed to everything else because of these, because them being orc cast materials. Therefore, they would be gold. Not iron, not steel, not the space marine magic metal, whatever it's called. I forget the name of it. It would be gold. And then where things are cut in like this, this is your typical iron and steel because it's a flat panel that's been cut in. And that's how you can identify it. And that's why I like these so blooming much because the Bad Moon's thematic and it makes sense and I love it. It's brilliant. I know I'm just being super, super nitpicky about it, but it's one of them. It's one of them. you got to, I don't know, be loyal to your faction in that regard. So, yeah. So having uh, a couple of these bits of rebar, you know, um, well, I say rebar, it's eye beams. Having a couple of these, like just adorning the sides as a sort of uh, anti-tank thing, you know, that makes sense. The, the claws and the spikies, not so much. So I think I'm going to have a little think of orientation now of where these are going to go and how many of them I'm going to use and etc etc. Do we only have three of these? Oh, that's a shame. I mean, one underneath is that now we've only got three of them. But yeah, like I say, I'm going to have a little look around. I'm going to put them on the sides, not on the back, not on the front. And then we should hopefully at that point be finally finally ready to prime oh you know what i think i spent more time building my death dread than i did this <laughs> but yeah it's just design choice now i'm going to count these out I'm going to divide them up so they're equal on either side and stuff like that and yeah that's going to be it for this episode so i do hope you have enjoyed it like i say next episode we're going to get some paint on it hopefully get some primer on it finally get to put the brush on the model so between episodes like i say i'm going to pop this on going to double check everything make sure it's all ready for priming and then we'll good to go from there so yeah also, I like I say, I got my YouTube partnership. There is some YouTube memberships, which I will be working on more so after this project, because this, like I say, it's it's a big thing. It's taking up a lot of my time. But there is some membership levels that I've put up. If you are interested in it and want to support me in some way, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But sadly, there isn't any... Uh, special things for me to offer you for doing that at the moment so yeah if you are just feeling super super generous want to help the cause i really 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 appreciate it i appreciate you watching that's cause enough for me you know just keep watching make sure you're subscribed likes and comments are always welcome you know if you got a question for me ask it don't just sit there and think what if why if who if how if you know ask the question anyway don't forget to take care of yourselves I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.